Welcome back to the channel guys, it is me, 8744. So today guys, we're predicting the guys the Champions League, Europa League, and Conference League quarterfinals guys. Quarterfinal times, baby. So this is where the business end of the competition comes into play. So like I said guys, let's try to hit as let's try to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. And also consider becoming a member of the channel, guys. I want to get some more members here, guys. At the time of recording this video, we have two members. So let's try to get like five or six members um, by the end of the by the end of the year, hopefully, you know. So yeah, please hit that uh, join button, man, to get access to that stuff. Anyways, um, with that all that being said, um, smash the like button. I want to try to reach 10 likes on this video. And yeah, I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to join the predictors, man. Join the predictor, predictor. So let's start with the Champions League first. We're going to start with the Champions League first. We're going to start at the 50th second here. And we're going to start with the first game, which we have here is Chelsea Real Madrid. I'm just gonna make it short and sweet, guys. There is no chance for Chelsea to come back. I don't see it. They've been looking absolutely dreadful, absolutely horrendous. I don't know where the goals are coming from from Chelsea. And even if they do score, it's gonna be a very, very scrappy goal. It won't be that spectacular. And I think Real Madrid are just way too good for Chelsea. Real Madrid, just they're just gonna be cruise control. I think this is gonna be a 2-1 win for Real Madrid. I don't see how Real Madrid Chelsea make a comeback here. And yes, I know people are going to tell me what they did last season, but guys, this Chelsea team is considerably worse than last season. And I'm going to go with Vinicius Jr., man. Vinicius Jr. was amazing the first leg. I think he won the man of the match the first leg, so I think he's going to win man of the match again here. Next it is Napoli versus Milan. Now, this is a very interesting one, guys. I'm really keen to see. This is my favorite. This is the matchup I'm going to be most paying attention to next week. Uh, the thing about this matchup that's really interesting to me is how will Napoli cope Without Ingiza and Kim and Jay. Those are two crucial players for them. You know, because they're going to be playing Dem, most likely, and Juan Jesus. Both of these players are very much fringe players and hardly play at all this season. And I feel like even though Osimhen is back from injury, he is recovering. Now, it's going to take some time for him to recover. And I feel like, for me, Milan is just a... They're just going to defend for their lives. They're going to defend for their lives. They're going to make things very, very difficult for Napoli on the counterattack. And they're going to be very defensively sound. And I think Mike McDonald will have an amazing game and goal. So it's going to come down to, I don't think Milan is aiming to win this game. I think Milan is aiming to either draw this game or or um, they're aiming to draw this game. Um, so my score prediction, man, it's a difficult one, but I'm going to go for a nil-nil draw. I just feel like for me, I just don't see how Napoli can break do through Milan. And I feel like Milan will just be Mike McDonald. I just think he's going to have a masterclass in goal. I just have this feeling it's going to be something similar to what we saw in the second leg between Spurs and um, uh, Milan there in particular. So I'm going to go with the nil-nil draw, guys. Nil-nil draw. Next up, it is Inter versus Benfica, guys. Now, uh, Benfica will have um, Otamendi back for suspension, who, is a, who was a big miss in the first leg. Obviously, he will add more defensive stability, you would imagine. And for Inter, man, I don't know what to say, man. They've been absolutely horrendous in the Serie A of the season. Absolutely dreadful. They keep losing games that they shouldn't be losing to. What is up with Inter, man? I don't know what's wrong with this Inter team. They've just looking absolutely clueless at the moment. But they're somehow in the Champions League. They're somehow most likely in the probably in the semifinals. And that's the crazy thing with Inter Milan is that despite how crap they've been in the league, they've made it together, cut it together in the Champions League. And, you know, what's very commendable with this team is that they haven't conceded a goal. And I feel like this is going to be where they're going to continue their streak. I think Inter, for me, will be defensively difficult to break down. I think Onana has been amazing for Inter in the Champions League. And now it's going to come down to, do I think they're going to win this game? Do I think they're going to tie this game? Personally, for me, I think they're going to win this game 1-0. Just a very much Inter-like performance. And yeah, I just think Inter is just going to get the better off. I just think for Benfica, man, they're just they're just looking a bit off at the moment, you know. They lost to Chavez over the weekend, and then obviously they lost to Porto. They haven't... They haven't scored a goal. Um, they haven't scored a legitimate goal because the goal they scored against Porto was an own goal. They haven't even scored a goal from open play, which is very, very concerning. So, yeah, I think for me, um, I'm just going to go with um, Gallardini, man. I'm going to go with him as my man of the match. I don't know why. I just have this feeling. The next time it is Bayern versus Man City, guys. Bayern made it just look shambolic at the moment. They just, just tied at home to Hoffenheim, a team that they should be really rel relatively beating. And yeah, Bayern just look absolutely uh, mess at the moment. I think Manchester City just tactically outclasses uh, Bayern in the first leg. We just saw how at ease Manchester City had at Bayern Munich. And we saw how Bayern's midfield got exposed big time. And I just don't see how Bayern can do this. I really don't think they can. Um, I don't think Manchester City will be as guns blazing as they were in the first leg. I think this will be a much more 
pragmatic approach. I think Pep Guardiola knows that the tie is pretty much already done. It's just a formality now. So I think he'll still play a strong team, but I don't think Man City will be as motivated as they were in the first leg, considering the huge margin that there is. And I don't see how Bayern come back. So I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. Bayern may win the game 2-1, but I think Man City will comfortably advance 4-2 on aggregate. So even if they do lose the game, I don't see Bayern scoring three goals. At most, I can see them as scoring two. And yeah, so I'm going to actually go with Bayern to score first, believe it or not. But I think Man City will get back in the game. So um, I'm going to go with who's going to score. The, who's going to be the man of the match? For, I, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be Gundogan, man. I think Gundogan's going to do it. I think he's going to have a master class in that midfield. Uh, just like he did in the first leg. He was great in the first leg, man. Great in the first leg. Now it's time for Europa League, guys. Europa League, Europa League time, man. So let's start with the first game, which we have here is Roma versus Feyenoord, guys. Now, obviously, I don't know if Tammy Abraham is going to be back for this game because he's currently injured, and Dybella is also out for this game. Guys, I think Feyenoord might actually just do it. I think Feyenoord might actually just do it. I think Feyenoord, for me, they're just looking so well organized, and I really like that Koku guy. That Koku guy has been amazing, and I feel like, for me, Feyenoord, for me, are really defensively sound, and I think... My issue with Roma is just, I don't know where the goals are coming from, you know? And so that's why I'm actually going to go with the draw. And I think Feyenoord will actually advance 2-1 in aggregate. Um, I think Feyenoord will actually score first in this game. And I think Roma will actually have a response. But I think it's going to be too little, too late. And yeah, and I think they're going to do it. So my goal score for Feyenoord, I'm going to say it's going to be... Uh, I'm going to say Danilo. Yeah, I'll say Danilo. Then, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to play my booster. Let's play my booster. I'm playing my booster in Chelsea Real Madrid. Sorry. Anyways, Union SG versus Leverkusen. Another very, very interesting one, guys. I'm going to go for a... Uh, I think I'm going to go for a Union SG to win. I feel like, for me, they're going to win this, but it's going to come through an extra time. I think they're going to win this an extra time. I feel like they're just so good at home. They're a very good home team. And I just think they're going to do this, man. I just think that um, Leverkusen, for me... They are a good team, but I think Union SG, the home support will give them the amount of boost that they need. And I feel like they're going to do this, man. I feel like they're going to do this. And yeah, I'm going to go for them to advance. Next up, it is Sporting versus Juventus, guys. Um, another very interesting game. I feel like for me, for this one, guys, um, Sporting for me have just looked... Um, they're, they're a good team, man. I think we saw what they did to Juve in the first, like how they are able to control the midfield and dominate the midfield at, at times. The, just the issue with Sporting, I've come to realize, is that this team doesn't have a goal scorer. This team just cannot score goals, and that's my big concern with this team. Is that you you can play all you can play this well the, all you want, but if you can't score goals, it doesn't mean anything, you know. And that's why I worry for Sporting is that what the, could very well happen is that they have such a good game, they're dominating the midfield, sixty per five percent possession, twelve shots, five on target, and then Juventus has to have like thirty five percent, let's just say, and then two shots. Two on target and one goal. You know, that's what I could very well see happening is that Sporting could do that. So I'm going to go play it safe. I'm going to go with the draw here. I'm going to play with a 1-1 draw. I think Sporting for me will actually play really well. But I think Sporting, I just think that Juventus will just find a way to get back in this game, man. You know, and there's so much, mo um, with, you know, with their serial form, you know, basically very difficult for them to get top four. They're going to have to go all in for the Europa League. And I think they will. And that's why I do think Juventus will advance. Just about two on an aggregate. As for who's gonna score first, I'm actually going with Sporting to score first, guys. But who's gonna score that goal for Sporting? I'm gonna go with. Don't let me down. I'm gonna go with Trincao. Don't let me down, Francisco Trincao, a Barcelona player, of course. Then the next one, guys, it is Sevilla versus Manchester United. Um, this is a very interesting one. I'm gonna play my booster on Juventus Sporting. Do I do it? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Sevilla versus Manchester United. This is a very interesting one, guys. Obviously, Sevilla is going to have Montiel suspended, I believe. And I think for a Man United, they're going to have Bruno Fernandes suspended. But the issue for Man United is that they're going through an injury crisis at the moment. Obviously, I think um, um, Lissandra is out for the season. Um, uh, Luke Shaw may be out for the game. Malasia is out. Um, Rashford is out. Um, Varane may be out for this game. There's so many injuries for United. And how are they going to cope with all this pressure upon? Um, It's going to be very interesting. I could see this one being a very, very interesting game. And it could even go to penalties. Guys, I think Sevilla... Mm, 
It's difficult to say because I think Sevilla's defense is still very sketchy. You know, and Sevilla were not even that great the first leg. They just scored those two goals because of, um, you know, Malasia, uh, you know, Malasia and Maguire, respectively. So, I don't know where to go with this one, guys. I'm going to go for United to win, I think. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win. I think Sevilla, United will actually do a comeback. I don't know why, but something tells me they're going to do a comeback in this game. And I feel like I feel like Sevilla will just crumble. And I have a feeling it's going to be like the reverse. Sevilla came back in the first leg. And I think United will come back in the second leg. I don't know why. But I just have this feeling for some reason. <laughs> for some reason, guys. I don't know why. I just have this feeling. And so my goal score for Sevilla, I'm going to say Yusuf Niziri. No one else in Sevilla can score but him. So, a very risky prediction there, guys. But I'm going to go with it regardless. <laughs> Next up. It is the Conference League. Conference League, Conference League. Conference League, guys. Conference League. Okay. So, where are we at? 11 minutes, man. 11 minutes, one. Okay. Okay. Conference League time. AZ Alkmaar versus Anderlecht. Um, for this one, guys, I'm going to go with the draw. Uh, I feel like AZ, it just... I feel like Anderlecht, they're just looking so good at the moment. They're just been amazing in Europe. Despite their League 4 being pretty bad... I think they're going to just do it somehow, and I feel like they're going to do it. And like for me, AZ Alkmaar, I just don't see them scoring three, and I think AZ will, um, um, AZ, um, Anderlecht will score one. So I'm going to go with Slamati to score the goal for Anderlecht. Next is Fiorentina versus Lech Bozon, guys. This is a formality. I feel really bad for Lech Bozon. Fiorentina, I'm going to go for them to win three, one, three I'm going to say 4-1. Ag- yeah, I'll say 4-0. I think this will be a blowout. Okay, maybe not blowout. Let, let's go with a more fair score. Let's go 3-0 win for Fiorentina. Fiorentina will destroy Lech Bazan. I feel bad really saying this, but yeah, Fiorentina is just way too good. And they should be comfortably advancing on this one, guys. I mean, comfortably advancing. I would be very surprised if Lech Bazan can get a result. Even a draw, I'd be very surprised. Needs versus a Basel. Very, very interesting, guys. I'm going to go for a... I think this game will go to extra time, and I think Nice will win just about on penalties. Sorry, no. I think they'll win in extra time. They'll score a goal in extra time, and I think Nice will do it. So, I'm going to go Nice to do it, and I'm going to go with Mofi to score um, the goal there. And then finally, the last one we have is West Ham versus Kent. West Ham have just come off drawing against Arsenal in the Premier League, and pretty much ruined Arsenal's Premier League t- title in Britain, so you can pretty much say. So, will we see that same West Ham, or are we going to see the West Ham that got dominated from Ghent? Because this is really weird, guys. This is really weird. I'm going to go for a draw. I think this will go to penalties. And something tells me Gaint is going to do this. I think Gaint's going to win on penalties. You heard it here first, guys. I'm still sticking with Gaint to win on penalties. But I wouldn't be surprised to see West Ham. So I'm going to go with West Ham just about. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe West Ham might win this on penalties. You know what? I'll say I'll change in my mind. I'll say West Ham wins this on penalties. And I'll say the goal score is going to be Lanzini. I'll say Lanzini scores. So, those are my predictions, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know your predictions in the comment section below. Please also participate in the leagues. And yeah, if you made it this far, please consider that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Comment below your thoughts in the comment section below. Because everybody come a member of the channel. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.